What's in your thoughts? Oh, what's in your mind? What fills your head and what leaves it behind? It's too much today. It's too much today. Listeners, and welcome back to Filling in the Gaps Re Rolled. We hope you had some great gaming since the last time you listened. And if you're new, welcome to the table. We are Filling in the Gaps Re Rolled, and we may not be an actual play podcast, but we are a podcast that hopes to help you actually play. We're three DMs who create stories and sessions based upon two randomized tables, one of themes, one of scenarios, using two D20s. It's a great way to get the creative juices flowing and to work out those DM muscles. So with that, let's let's introduce ourselves. I'm Malcolm, one of your hosts. I am David. And I'm Mambo, the third host here. Joining us for this very special episode is a very special guest. Um, It's me. Hello. Uh, it's it's it, I'm I'm Jacob Jacob Buds from uh, XP to Level Three. I make videos on YouTube. I live stream on Arcane Arcade and Twitch sometimes, and uh, I, I do a variety of different things. But that's mostly what I do is is make nerdy D and D videos on 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 the internet. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. This is so <laughs> exciting. I'm glad that you're excited, yeah. and I have seemingly lost the question I was going <laughs> to ask, because my, I opened the wrong document. Isn't that just how life goes? Um, you just start reading, like, just some random thing? Basically. These are my tax write-offs. This isn't the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, well, speaking of that, David, actually, that's perfect because it lines up with a question I, I found, which is, what's your favorite trope of RPGs like that you like to put in your RPGs? Right. Okay, so I really like putting a lot of tropes in RPGs. I, I think that the more tropey your game is, the more fun it is, and a lot a lot of people don't think this way because everybody wants their games to be super unique and really fun and super interesting. But I found that the more like tropes from media and and movies and stuff like that that I put in my games, the more I feel like people really like uh, the game. I think my favorite trope in general is I really like just a really evil villain. Just like <laughs> there's not really a reason why he's evil. He's just really evil, and I I and it's like you just gotta you just gotta stop this evil guy because I. Think I think that that's fun. I think it's fun for players to just be like, you know what, that guy, you screw that guy. We're gonna we're gonna destroy that guy. And I think I think that's a lot of fun. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I think my favorite is um, like whenever your players come up with a really convoluted scheme when they're trying to figure something out, um, and that's not at all what you planned, just to change it to match what they said. It makes your players feel smart. It cuts out on some of the background work you have to do, and it's totally agree. Nice. Pretty cool. Um, now, does putting Mambo number five references count as a trope? Because that's what every game I have. <laughs> uh, what? I mean, it's your trope. I mean, you basically, I did basically made make it your trope now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of my uh, evil bad guys that my players are about to meet um, is called Lou Von Begovich. Um, going oh. off of Strahd. So, okay. I can't wait for that. He lives in Mombrovia. Um, so... <laughs> it's gonna be fun um i also just like you know doing like the comedies of like the three slapstick stuff for my yeah, yeah. my games uh like the i think i actually have something called the the trope troop where it's just a whole bunch of different tropes that we just i set up my players and they're like god just stop <laughs> i think yeah there's a lot of really cool tropes that you can um throw into D games and i think it really helps streamline your games especially like especially what uh you were saying about the puzzles um or, mm-hmm. or generally that's like that's how i can think about puzzles sometimes and a lot of dms do is they just kind of go here's a weird thing like uh this door won't open and then like the second or third thing the players think of it's like that's the solution you're so smart and it's like we are smart and it's like no no i tricked you (laughs) so um i think (laughs) it works every time exactly so um but i think there's a lot of like um when i'm writing for my games i really like to go into like tv tropes sometimes and just like find tropey things because when i was first starting and i was writing my games i was like whoa this is gonna be so weird and wacky and they're never gonna expect any of this and then um my players would just like point out certain tropes and i think players just 
kind of naturally did that. And he was like, oh, this is from Lord of the Rings. And it's like, yeah, well, okay. I'm just going to give into this. Who cares? And I think they have more fun with it because as, as soon as I just give in and I'm like, this guy's basically Gollum. And they're like, okay, I, I, that's fine. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to call him Gollum, but I mean, he's going to be a, a measle from the Shadowfell and he's like crazy and he hunches over. Actually, he did that in one of my games. And um, and they were all over it. They loved it. And I think it's because it's easy for them to understand. It's easy, it's easy for them to kind of connect with it because they already mm-hmm. know what it is. Because uh, really nothing you're going to make is original. And that's, you know, everybody knows that. So it <laughs> might as well just give in and just be like, what trope can I use today? You know, what I think it's I fun. fun. I with. think it's really great. So mm-hmm. do, you, do you guys use yeah. a lot of tropes in your games? <laughs> For me, when I first made my first world, uh, the whole idea of it was I inherited it from my uh, friend who was DMing before. And he was like, okay, yeah, I'm done. And I was like, but you, you ended the world basically with the apocalypse. And he's like, yeah. He's like, so if you want to like start a new thing, I was like, no, I want your apocalypse world <laughs> because I was like, cause if I could have it be that every, I was like, you have all different walks of life reacting to the apocalypse. And I was like, and I can make every genre happen in this. I can make Westerns mm-hmm. happen because there's a group of people who are like local, local law enforcement's what we got to do. We limit magic. We keep things down. We have a bunch of gen- geniuses come together and go, I have some ideas to make basic basically cyberpunk we have <laughs> like uh, a person yeah it, it was so perfect because i was just like this is so i but with that i was like it's got to be the most movie heavy trope reference that thing that like there's got to be stuff where where people see it they're like i get what this is mm-hmm. so they're not just like oh i'm being thrown into like something and i'm like oh it was a western at the end it's <laughs> yeah, like, no, you, you get that you know, the whole time yeah yeah because it almost becomes like difficult to um to imagine in your mind without the tropes you know and, and i think that's why people get scared of them because it's like oh they're saying me but it, what's cool about it is it really ha- can help your players i do it all the time i describe things from movies just constantly now in my games i'm always like oh it looks like that thing from that one movie right here like uh you know or it's like it's like you see a gemstone and it's red it basically looks like an infinity stone and the player's like oh now i know and it's like there there <laughs> see it's not hard <laughs> it's fun all right with that out of the way gentlemen shall we roll let's do it <laughs> I have dice ready. I don't I don't know what's about to happen, but I will be rolling for scenarios and, and I'll be rolling for themes. And our lovely guest, you'll be rolling an advantage, so we'll have two combos for mm. each table. And then you And then Jacob, you can pick uh which one which of the combos you want to pick from. All it. right. Today I'm rolling my lovely uh metal dice. They're blue with a gold outline, and I rolled a 12 for the scenarios table. I'm rolling a red, black, and green dice that reminds me of watermelon, and I rolled a 15. <laughs> well, let's see what those stack up to. So, uh, is it is it me? Do I go? Do I am I rolling now? Yep. All right. Yes. So, and I'm rolling two. Yes. Okay. Um, and because you guys described your dice, I'm going to describe mine. Well, um, I really like green dice because green's like my favorite color, and I have like this metal one that's going to do horrors for the audio, and. <laughs> It's like green and silver. And then I have this other one. It looks like, do you know, like, like sealing wax before it's see it's wax, you know, bef- while it's solid. It looks like that. It's all like swirly and sparkly. It's beautiful. Nice. Okay. I'm rolling them. Oh. I, I have rolled an 18 and a seven. Let's see. So that's going to be. So for our themes, we have the options of zero gravity combat, uh, from, uh, from me, but more accurately, my, uh, my friend Rob recommended that, but he didn't have a discord or a Twitter at the time. So he was like, zero gravity. He was like, you should fight in zero gravity. And I was like, oh, I'll put that on the list. Um, and the other theme is a day at the races from flare gun fish and Warley can. So we got two recommendations on that one. Cool. And for scenarios, we have factory with conveyor belts from Warley can and don't sleep from, I'm going to butcher this, but magnetus magnus. That looks right. Magnetus. All right. All right. So Jacob, you can pick one theme and one scenario. Oh okay. Uh, zero gravity combat sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and factory with conveyor belts or don't sleep. Don't. What is it? What does don't sleep entail? You know, what? I'm not going to ask. <laughs> we're going to figure, we're it, gonna out. figure it out. <laughs> don't sleep. Um, factory with conveyor belts is a little more straightforward. I'm I'm picking the easy ones. <laughs> so zero <laughs> combat and factory with conveyor belts. Okay. Okay. Uh. 
So when you think of, and any of you three, uh, when you think of factory with conveyor belts and zero gravity combat, what kind of comes to mind for you? Why would you need conveyor belts if you have no gravity? <laughs> <laughs> it's zero gravity combat, I remind you. It doesn't have to be you're fighting in the factory. I, I kind of have an idea of, like, an elder brain using, like, its minions to, like, craft something as, like, a get-rich-quick scheme. And when you go to fight, it, like, puts on psychic powers that you have to, like, fight, you know, bouncing off of these conveyor belts and such. So, what if, um, what if it's, like... What it, so it's a it, what if it's like a factory where like all of the walls and the ceilings and the floors are 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 dangerous they're acidic and the the um and whatever that is being made I like the idea of like that elder brain thing um what if everybody who works there whether it be like some kind of minion type creature uh, they have to go through like this barrier that casts like a levitate spell on them so that it's basically zero gravity um because that's how the levitate spell works is you just you just you you're like a balloon you just kind of float around so. <laughs> So, so they have to be in midair, kind of pushing, not maybe like buttons, but like making the entire factory work. Um, but they have to levitate. Otherwise, if they touch any of the floors or the walls or the ceiling, uh, they'll die. I don't know why yet, <laughs> but that's an idea. <laughs> And this very much reminds me of like a Willy Wonka X type <laughs> scenario, yeah, there but you like go. the elder brain is Willy <laughs> <laughs> and like red caps or something like that, or like the Oompa Loompas. And it's just like mass producing something. I, c- I can't think of what, but like <laughs> there you mass go. producing dark energy just to keep things going. <laughs> mass producing dark energy. I think that's great. <laughs> um, I, I, I like the idea of like, uh, the, it's, it's like a, <laughs> it's like an elder brain or something and it's created like this. It's like insane or something and it's creating like this factory of like something like dark yeah like dark energy but like it has these weird rules for like every room so it's like nobody can touch the walls nobody can touch the ceilings so everybody must float <laughs> their way through like this this dungeon and so like if player if adventurers were to show up here they would just be floating everywhere and it would be it would be a fun way to kind of like go about like that kind of encounter because um uh they're not used to that because you have like swimming rules and all that but there's never really anything uh there for that I mean, rules. talking about tropes, you could bring in the game, The Floor is Lava. Here. <gasps> That's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you could have some, like, molten walls. You could have it be really hot instead of acidic, and then just have it be like, you can't oh my God. touch any of the walls, the ceiling, the floor. It's like, no, you, maybe the conveyor belts are the way you move in the fact. Okay. So it's like, it's the only way if you touch the ground. That, yeah. So, <laughs> I... I Oh man, I'm just trying to think of stuff. It, it, what would be fun if, if like every, there were different rooms that were creating different things and they needed different chemicals from different materials. So like there's like, there's a lava room and then there's an acid room and then there's like a, a frozen, <laughs> it's like a freezing room. And if you touch the walls, you get like, you get stuck like in a Christmas story. <laughs> 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 so you just have to float through everything. <laughs> but what reason, what reason would some elder brain need to have these rooms just covered, smothered in, in this elemental kind of thing? That's, that's what I want to figure out. Is it like maybe protecting eggs or there something? There you go, yes! Have, oh my god! Begin- <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. So each little egg uh, needs to be in a certain type of environment. Maybe that's what the factory's yeah, making. Yeah, I was, I was kind of thinking, what if it's like packaging up these eggs in like toys or something to spread across Faerun? So like, <laughs> oh so like, as they open up these gifts, their kids get infected with the Mind Flayer oh, tadpoles. No. <laughs> Yo, wait, is this Krampus? Oh my god, it's like weird zero G Krampus. <laughs> Oh, man. And they have to go to Krampus Factory in order to stop him. And they have to destroy all the eggs. Ew. I love (laughs) this. The eggs, they, like, eventually fall off of, like, the ceiling and the walls. They land on conveyor belts and keep going. Well, the conveyor belts have to be how you get around this factory. Because while you're levitating, you're not really touching anything. And you Mm -hmm. don't really control where you go. So, you have, like, a handle on a conveyor belt that you grab to go from area to area. So, the conveyor belts for the workers, for the people... (laughs) 
But that makes sense. Well, I feel like the conveyor belts can also take the eggs too, because they, they have to get from they have to go out at some point. So maybe that's your way like through the rooms. Maybe that's the protection mm-hmm. section. And if you go out, you have to like float around or you will hit the hot lava <laughs> or the icy cold or whatever it is that the eggs are being produced. Oh man, in. that's great. And then what you do to make this even worse is you fill up <laughs> the uh you fill up the entire dungeon with like kobolds or or something. Um some kind of monster. <laughs> Uh, but they all ha- they can all cast Thunder Wave. <laughs> yes! Oh <my laughs> and they just blast you into the walls. <laughs> and the players will just be mad. They'll be like, why did you do this to us? <laughs> this is just Super Smash yes! Bros. <laughs> 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 you can have a you can have the Elderbrain cast uh, Mage Hand to move all the workers around too if you want if you want that giant glove in there. Oh man! <laughs> but uh, if you want to keep it with like the Krampus theme, I think Red Caps like the those are like the evil gnomes, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you could just have yeah. those guys there, and then you could have the Thunder Wave going. And there you gosh, go. I think that'd be so funny. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying there should be hands? So like, like some big B hands are going around to different rooms. Yeah, and just moving so the workers hand around. And crazy hand. <laughs> yeah. And we got the balls. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Because the, the Elder Brain can cast Wall of Force, too. Oh. It knows that spell, so that would work perfectly. <laughs> That's crazy. Smash Super Smash Bros. Krampus Factory. <laughs> That's the name of it. That's what we created. It's incredible. <laughs> I love it, though. Super Krampus Smash. Oh man, I'm putting. I'm, I'm gonna put I'm, that in a game. I'm in for this. <laughs> so dumb. You found the point of these episodes. Yes. <laughs> oh man. And if you need help learning, uh, wanting to know how much damage uh, the walls or ceiling or anything should do, there's a there's an area in the Dungeon Master's Guide that has like um, tables of damage, and based on like your character's <laughs> level, you could just do that kind of damage if they fail a save or half as much. So like if it's the Acid Room, they take and they're like level ten or something. Every time they touch it, they could take like 5d10 acid damage or half as much if they succeed a constitution save <laughs> and then the lava they could just die i don't know <laughs> i feel like I, i'd kind of follow mortal combat rules when it comes to the acid if you're like sunk into it it's it's bye bye character <laughs> you're, like, no- you're a skeleton now <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's great so what if, if if we're treating this like a factory, rather than needing all these eggs to be in different different types of eggs, what if they're just being treated with the elements so that they're now resistant to it? Oh. So as your egg goes through the acid area, it becomes resistant to acid. And so they're basically building the ultimate mind player. Yeah. Ooh, I was about to say, what kind of thing would you think it would have to be? But uh, to make it that these mind, the mind flares are finding ways to make better mind flares? Oh, man. And then the fun part is later on, you get the homebrew and throw that at your players later and be like, here are some of the yes, mind flares that go yes. on. <laughs> so I think that you, you like... The eggs are like ready to hatch too. So, um, but as soon as they get taken out of each environment, or if or if they're hatched or anything, then they they attack. So the players are having to destroy these eggs, and these things are coming up. They're resistant to the wall, so they can like crawl and like get hit by it. Um, and then while that's happening, you have the whatever guards this place. Just say it's kobolds, magic druid kobolds who have thunder wave prepared, <laughs> and they come in and they just start blasting everybody. So each room is going to be like uh like the wizard probably has like fire spells prepared, but as soon as they get in the lava room, they're screwed because like the creatures in there are like immune to it. So mm-hmm. they have to come up with different. And what's cool about that, I love this about encounter building, and I think a lot of DMs should do this. Is um you're you're making your players think a different way when you're when you're constantly throwing different things at them. So the most boring combat you could ever make is just a flat field and nothing's there, and they just uh just fight the stat block. That's all you're doing. But as soon as you <laughs> add like little things, like the, the all the walls are lava, and also you're getting <laughs> thunder waved, and also each. <laughs> <laughs> creature is 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 is, uh, is resistant to a different type of damage. You'll force them to think differently about yes. each situation, which is cool. Or knowing players, uh, D D players, uh, they'll come up with one really good solution for every room. You're like, well, that okay. <laughs> they'll be like, oh, we'll just uh, you know, we'll just throw grenades on everything, and it's like, when did I give you grenades? Oh yeah, like five games ago. That's right. <laughs> you know, when we were in a completely different setting, when we when the grenades would not help you. At all and i thought it would be yeah, funny exactly <laughs> uh, don't like what are those hippo things gifts. Don't they have grenades gifts don't they have grenades uh, i i think so i can double check <laughs> i don't know they have guns so maybe i just think if you have a gun you have a grenade <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, man. Okay, but I kind of want to focus... A l- we've got the factory setting yeah, down. Yeah, that's done. And we've got a bit of the zero gravity down, but zero gravity combat. So how would we really make sure that they fight in zero gravity? <laughs> Okay, so there's swimming rules, but it wouldn't be that. It would have to be like, oh, now I'm going to be diving into the book now. There's like travel on the astral plane where you use, um, I guess your intelligence or wisdom modifier to determine your speed. Okay, so you like, you like will yourself to go forward. Yeah. Okay. Well, it could be part of that. I kind of like that. So the the fr- the annoying part though is that uh, it could be that if if it w- that could be like if it takes place in the astral plane, which it totally could. Um, <laughs> or if everybody has the levitate spell on them, they're kind of screwed because they have to get themselves through with the with the conveyor belt. So the conveyor belt is like their only form of progression forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you would want to do is you would want to have like doors in between every kind of like room. Um, and at once it's like it's like a it's like an old video game. As soon as everything's dead, the door opens or something. Um, it sets off like some security system. Maybe there's keys. I don't know. Uh, but oh, you gotta have the keys from Doom. Like you get <laughs> your red key for the fire room and your green key for the acid room. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just give them in a random order, and they're like, "What is the green key for?" And you're like, "You'll find out." <laughs> Um, I think that if, uh, what would be fun, it, it, what you can do with levitate is you can like, it, it's like it being in zero G. You can, you can push yourself off of walls and fight mm-hmm. things. So a player could, uh, push themselves off the conveyor belt to go fight something, but then they would have to find a way to get back without landing <laughs> into the walls. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like you could be nice and give them rope before they go. There you go. I mean, That's that a good is idea. in like a, a, a general like adventurer's pack, I mm-hmm. think, right? Is that there's like 30 feet of rope and all. I've known so many people who are like, rope's super useful. And other people are like, why am I going to use rope for? I'm an adventurer. I have like, I have a sword. I don't, and I was like, yeah. Never know we might need rope. I don't know. You could also have that if you have a druid in your party, they could use wild shape and turn into a bird or something to um, mm-hmm. help move them along. If you're under the effects of levitate, can you use your normal flight? I was about to say you could maybe become like a f- like a, s- a snake or something. And like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, that would probably be... No, but dude, you need friction. So if you were a bird, you'd like fly, but you'd be like way too fast. <laughs> you'd just be like, this is how I fly. <laughs> You just be like, and then you just fly straight to the wall. So I think the way that you could do combat with this would just be, first of all, you got to almost ignore a map at this point. Well, I guess you could if you could map elevation. (laughs) Isometric D&D map. (laughs) No, but you, uh, I think the best way that you could do combat with this would just be, uh, um, you would want to have multiple conveyor belts. So you should have like, like one in the middle and then one in the, f- then like four on like the walls. I'm imagining like box, boxy rooms. Um, and like there's, mm-hmm. con- there's conveyor belts going through the walls. Um, but there's like doors so you can't get through them all the way and you'd have to unlock them in order to continue forward. Maybe there's a password in each room and the guards come in. And if they find out what the password is, they can go through the doors. Mm-hmm. I'm overthinking this. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is exactly what this podcast is. Perfect. Our podcast is basically let's overthink let's the session. Overthink- we just Made two up, sentences so. <laughs> into oblivion. That's great. It's great. So, um, so there you go. So every time, every room is locked, but they have to get a way to get the guards to come in. Maybe they're cobalt, so they're dumb. So they come in mm-hmm. anyways, and then the, and then they watch them put in the password or say the password, whatever the word is, and then they learn it for that room so that they can progress forward. Um, but you would have four of them going from like the top corners and then the bottom corners and the one in the middle, so they could like jump between them um, and like push <laughs> off of them to fight other things in in the middle of them yeah. but also they're getting thunder waves so they're constantly they're they're balancing moving between these these conveyor belts while also trying to fight while also trying to stay away from the walls <laughs> i think it's fun if these kobolds are not immune to the walls so you get to have yes. like that's why these conveyor belts are here but there's also got to be creatures in these rooms mm-hmm. which either like generate the lava or just are there because of it so those will be the creatures immune to it that mess with you from the walls I like but that. the kobolds use the conveyor system to do their jobs and kind of process these eggs okay so what kind of creature would create lava on a wall you could just do like a lava elemental, maybe like create your own. Okay, or it's it's just a creature. It just works. It's like under mind control or something, and it just it just walks right. around and just just smothers the walls. It's just like <laughs> a janitor, basically. <laughs> All right, there you go. 
Oh, and the players could kill it if they wanted, and then maybe they could like free up uh, an area of the wall, like it would like drip off or something like that. There's, this would be a place mm. they could rest. Yeah, yes. there's something uh, something called a lava child that pretty much just does that. It's born from lava mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. fire elemental plane, and mm-hmm. it's a combination of uh, earth and fire. Mm. So, like, oh, if you have children. a couple of those guys just under the control of the the um, elder brain, and they're just like, it's kind of like heat miser, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow, That's that is cool. ugly. Who is planning on putting all of these creatures in presents to to give to to give to the rest of the world? They're going to be like, "Oh, gift!" And it's like, "Surprise! <laughs> it's mind control." <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is the best gift and I ever and got. And it's cold flavored, <laughs> and it's like, "Oh, it, it's my favorite!" Oh, mind control! I didn't. It's my favorite gift. Thank you so Thank much. You, Krampus. I pre- oh! <laughs> no, my free will. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So the players would eventually get to the end of it, probably really beaten up by the end, and they would just have, like, a warehouse full of these gifts, and they would have to, like, destroy them. So mm-hmm. you could have, like, a boss battle at the very end, where, like, the all of the, the levitate probably wears off by that point, because levitate lasts ten minutes. But, eh, you could, you could mess with the rules, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. I always do that there's runes or permanent, like, objects in the room somewhere that are, like, making it last yeah, longer. Yeah, there you go. So that way it's... But not immune to dispel magic. Do you know how funny <laughs> it would be if it was like, I'm gonna dispel magic <laughs> elemental, and everybody falls. <laughs> um, Straight into the lava. <laughs> uh, but you could get to the end and there would just be all, like, these, these like, wrapped eggs, and, pe- and, and um, you could have, like, a couple of them, like, come out, and the players would have to fight them, but there would be, like fire ones and cold ones and acid ones and they would have to fight all of them at the same time so they would Mm -hmm. take everything that they learned from all the past rooms and put them together to try to beat all of them which could be something really cool and interesting or it'll be grenades those (laughs) those hands that have been flying around for the elder brain could be Mm -hmm. picking these up and just throwing them at you yes there you go and they could they could fight the hands if they want to i don't know Yeah, we have to have Master Hand be at the end. I mean, because we can't... I don't know if you can fight, like, an Elder Brain as a, like, physical yeah. fight. So you have the Elder Brain... Does an Elder Brain even need to be there? Like, yes, it needs to be in this campaign, but does it need That's to be true. in the same, be, like, area? It could area? be out of that area. It could be somewhere else. It could be, like, uh, on... Mm-hmm. Uh, who cares? It could be halfway across the world. <laughs> can it? Or is an Elder Brain, like, limited? Like, it has to be nearby. Um, It's got, like, a five-mile... I mean, in the in the official rule book if you're gonna go by that it's got a five mile span of its territory where it controls everything hmm. normally it's in like a giant glass jar and like this dark water brine what is yep. it uh it's Super a Metroid. dimly glowing brine pool filled with foul and bla- uh, brackish water infused with the elder brains of uh, vital fluids and um psychic energy okay but this elder brain is crazy right yeah so what if what mm-hmm. if it's brine is like something weird it's like Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 no it's uh oh gosh it's eggnog <laughs> <laughs> oh, big, big brain said he gets some eggnog. Oh. So this this episode <laughs> could not be more perfect as I slam my hand into my mic because uh, I'm running a one shot for Bardic Inspiration tonight, and like this is it now. Now I'm doing this. <laughs> there you go. Well, you could you could have the elder brain at the end. I think it would be good because you could have some satisfaction at the end of this whole thing. Just be like, ugh. And also, it's fun to explain that to your players. Like they get to the end. Yeah. And it's like this big boss room and in the middle. There's like that jar in the center and it's just yellow liquid. And then oh, there's just a brain. In it. <laughs> but it's so thick. It's so thick. They can't see it. So the hands come over and they start, they just start throwing gifts. The everywhere. brain moves around a little bit like, it's yeah, me. Hello. Yeah. And then they're like, what's in that giant glass? And then like, it just comes forward and like right at the beginning, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I just I just see it as like they enter in like so the way I picture it is like there's the one room they enter has has like the four corners have like different colored doors so you have like the yellow the, like a yellow door a red door a blue door a green door and like a mm-hmm. door in the middle and the middle <gasps> door after they get all yes. keys enters into the to the final boss battle but when they enter it's this nice cozy room there's a fireplace with a fire going milks and cookies are there a giant like Christmas tree that could be like a tringent or something if you want to add on more 
more if they're if they get through like the other parts really easy and you're like what the hell guys That's so you amazing. throw in like a tree in like a, a christmas tree in there and then all of a sudden they see this giant giant like you like you said yellow liquid jar <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh to add to that Going through this whole thing, all these eggs have to be, like, pure white. And as they get um, infused, it's like sprinkles. So they're basically taking a white cookie or egg and oh. decorating a cookie for the whole thing. There you go. And rather than just I changing like the color, they l- just look patterned based on whatever elements that they've been infused with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, like what if, okay, so what if each room is, like, food-themed then? So, like, the fire one is, like, (laughs) chili flakes, and, like, the the cold one is, like, peppermint, and then you have an acid one that's, I don't know. Gingerbread. Gingerbread? Uh, there you go. You could do that. Yeah. And, but way too much ginger. It's just so acidic. Oh, and yeah. Like, it's so, ah! so terrible. Yeah. My sinuses. <laughs> <laughs> or, or pickle flavored uh, candy canes. Oh. oh. <laughs> Those are yeah. a thing? What? No. Yeah. I saw my target. I was like, oh. What in the hell? Pickle flavored candy canes. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> I'm getting these. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Amazon for ten dollars. Buy now. <laughs> no, they're not in stock until December tenth. Why are these out of stock? Who's buying these? <laughs> they're at Target. Who's what buying the hell? them? <laughs> Target doesn't sell. Like Target. Target only has stuff in stock and on shelves if you people buy it. So the fact that you saw it, Sam, met the people. Are what buying. in the hell? That's so weird. <laughs> Oh, man. Anyways, uh, that was a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. We do that That's on the great. show. Okay, so each each thing is food themed. He's got so much eggnog in his brain. He's just so hungry, but he can't. <laughs> he doesn't have a mouth. He can't eat. So he just wants to give spread the joy to oh. everybody else. What if, what if that's the thing, is that he can't eat, and so that's what he's constantly trying to create, but he can't? Yes, because they, like, consume the, 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 I mean, sort of, they, like, the, the, the little tadpoles that go in your eyeballs, and they consume your brain, and they take over, so that's all he wants, is he just wants to, sp- also, he has no mind flares anymore, he's, like, he's old and tired, and he's like, ah, they all died. <laughs> yeah, you could have it be that this is his way of, like, because, from my understanding of an, of an elder brain, it's kind of hive-mindy, right, they kind of share experiences mm-hmm. of the mind flares. Yeah, that they correct? control them basically. So you'd be able to see what they taste. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You could you could have that extra flavor finally. Mm. Maybe this isn't like even, maybe this isn't, no, it's still gotta be Krampus because there's no like mean Santas. <laughs> yeah, Unless that's you count true. Santa's sleigh where Santa's the son of a... Brain <laughs> Krampus? Okay, so like completely out of left field. What if this is like Guy Fieri who is trying to take over the world to eat everything across all planes of existence? Oh my so, god. So he's making this huge mind flare army just so he can taste stuff from different like locations. <laughs> the name of the dungeon is Flavor Town. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Oh Oh my god. (laughs) That's so dumb. (laughs) There's 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 gotta be the hair on top on top of on top of the brain. (laughs) But it's not but it's it's not Guy Fleary. So it's like a a flare, so guy fleary. Oh my god. I like that. The the hair is coming off the top of it, but it's like it's just like mold that's like grown there, but it's like it's got eggnog on the tip, so it's like Frosted? <laughs> or it's just frosting. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually frosted. It, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Okay, so that's the final boss. This makes it such a tragic... Yeah, that's like oh, the final ahead. boss Sorry. there is like the, the hands and, and the brain and all that. And he's just throwing these presents at you. He's like, ah, oh, no, my evil plans. Sorry, what are you going to say? But yeah, it would make it so much more tragic if it's just about this guy who's like, I used to be able to taste the world. Now I taste nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all he wants is taste. <laughs> Oh man, that's great. And then he um <laughs> whenever whenever it's his turn or he takes like a legendary action or something, he's like diners, drive ins and dives. <laughs> <laughs> He could have layer actions. That should be like his different <laughs> okay. special moves. Yeah, uh, elder brains do have layer actions. Yeah, they already do. But I mean, this one's yeah. <laughs> this one's different. This one's fun. <laughs> you have a car come in. <laughs> <laughs> that's the drive-in. <laughs> yeah, that's the drive-in part. 
<laughs> he needs he needs something that would be delivering these gifts. So you have to have a slave. That's true. It's the nautiloids. You know, the, yeah. the mind flayer shift, but they're empty. He's just controlling them. <laughs> um. <laughs> and so and when he gets really desperate, they come through the walls. <laughs> well, we could probably do like reindeer still if we want to go Christmas theme, try to figure out monsters to do for like reindeer. Okay. Yeah. Reindeer. I don't know, man, I'm not th- Nightmares. I don't want to think about an aberrational reindeer. Oh. Nightmares. Yeah. Like instead of antlers, it has tentacles. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> I mean, it could just be reindeer. Yeah. <laughs> it could just could, be reindeer. It could just be reindeer. Brains. <laughs> Giant reindeer. D and D gives us the power to make That's things true. giant. We're giant enough to reindeer. You can use the giant elk as a stat block. Yeah. Could you? Could you imagine the? Though I love the giant elk with like the tentacles, and then like one of them has like this deep red <laughs> nose that shoots lasers out of it. <laughs> no, it's got to be like an. You got to have like an eye on the nose instead of. Yeah, the oh my god! <laughs> It's mind flares. Mind flares are the ones that are pulling yeah. the sleigh. Oh, <laughs> mind <no>. flare reindeer. <laughs> oh no! What did he do to them? Why did they have extra legs? Oh, they're like mind flare centaurs, but it's reindeer. Uh. Oh, well, there you go. You know, you just be like, "There's a brain and eggnog, and also these abominations." <laughs> um, how would your how would the your party players find out about this quest? Or find out about this. Oh, uh, there's got to be some eggs that were delivered. Yeah, that's what I would think. Like he okay. sent out a few test ones, and so they find them. And they're like, "What are these?" And they're like, "Flavor Town. Where's that?" <laughs> and then they go to. They want to go Christmas. Yeah, and they see. Then they then they find out that like some kobolds delivered them because he doesn't have the reindeer ready. So they follow the kobolds, mm. and then leads them over to like this cave network. And there's these conveyor belt rope things, and they're like, "All right, well, all right let's grab on." <laughs> They could do that. They could, if you wanted to go with the Krampus Christmassy one, you could have it be that it's just coal delivered and a threat of like, your gift is coming oh, soon. No. And it's like, oh, uh, nobody knows what that means, <laughs> but you get that that's pretty obvious. Yeah, exactly. Like it could be, they, um, maybe there's like a town or a city nearby and they've been pervaded by this elder brain for a long time. And they're like, he's festive. We don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> He completely changed. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe that's why he doesn't have mind flares. Maybe the like he, he's in his brain and he's he's over here in like this in this deep cave or something. I don't know. And that's just where I imagine elder brains to be because that's where my, my brain goes. But it, like he, he was once a problem to like the city and then other adventurers took care of all the mind flares, but they forgot to get rid of the brain. <laughs> or they're the ones who poured the eggnog in. Yeah, they poured eggnog in his thing. <laughs> Absolutely. What a party would do. (laughs) They thought it would kill him, but it just made him stronger. (laughs) He just got drunk off of the eggnog, so now he's. exactly it. <laughs> he's perma drunk yeah. now and that's that's why he came up with this like crazy scheme he's like i'm gonna send out eggs <laughs> everywhere because he's in eggnog my players evolve yes it's egg- he's in oh eggnog. my god <laughs> it all connects you know what's funny is you have the eggs for the eggs but you also have the nog for noggin and he's a brain <laughs> <gasps> He's the eggnog. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What if he's what if he's got good intentions then? What if he's like, this eggnog's so good, I have to share it with the world, and that's why he's getting these there eggs. There you go. That's his master scheme. Yes, exactly <laughs> it. Oh my god, that's so good. So, uh, what's like the entrance to this place? Like, how do you get into it? Do you think? I, I kind of picture it as like Santa's workshop. Okay. Where like, kind of like, uh, in a, I don't know if it's like an abandoned building, but very much like maybe in, like built into a mountain. It's this grand like factory and he's had it like, m- like perfectly landscaped. So it's very inviting. So <laughs> it's like, come on, come look at the workshop where this is where Santa Claus is or whatever you want to call him. And everyone's like going to town. It's like, yeah, this guy just changed overnight. He was like, super like this used to be a dark gloomy castle and now look at it it's great <laughs> you see one of the villagers drinking like the eggnog they're like yeah oh, it's like no. great it's like this free stuff and like you have like if like the the elves or the kobolds are like welcome to our town do a little song number <laughs> yeah yeah and you're like are those kobolds looking trying to look like elves like that's weird <laughs> 
they're wearing actual elf ears. <laughs> yeah, and then the party, like, probably gets suspicious or something, and then they probably try to investigate, and then they find, like, the factory portion. And then they're like, oh, yeah. The town that's nearby has probably already been mind-controlled. So while they're yeah. all being festive and happy, they're also like, you should have one of these cookies that's an egg. Mm-hmm. I love the forcefulness of this, like, the idea now of this brain being less malicious and more being like, I'm going to spread holiday cheer <laughs> by force. Yes. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna be happy once they drink this nog and have an egg. At the end. Yeah, and they're just like, wait, you're not evil at all. He's like, no, I'm just really festive. And they're like, oh, well, all right. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you still gotta stop. But I mean, <laughs> you're right. You're right. Here, uh, just one glass of the nog on me, because you guys were great. You're truly changing me around. <laughs> just press your There's cup a, right on me. It is, it is brain jar. There's a spigot at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he like pushes it and it comes out and play, party's like Ooh. oh that's gross yeah oh, uh, okay so so there's like a song and dance and and a little entrance way and then the party's gonna be like these are kobolds what are we doing here this is like super creepy and stuff they'll probably look around and like any door back door they go into like leads to like the the beginning of this conveyor belt and immediately as they step in they just whoop they just start levitating <laughs> and they have to grab onto the conveyor belt and they're like why are we levitating this is weird and then as soon as they keep going they open up to these huge rooms and the first one's like lava but there's like i don't know it's like it's like factory belts and conveyor things of like chili powder everywhere there's like fire <laughs> lava children spreading fire all over the place and then there's the eggs in the middle and uh and they hatch and they have like little nautiloids in them or something and it's like ew that's gross we gotta just we gotta stop those <laughs> and then but then there's the main door and the only way they can get through the main door to where uh mr eggnog is is if they get all the keys from the previous rooms it's like a zelda dungeon it's like yeah you gotta go get all the keys so you gotta come back and you can open the big door. But all the keys are ornaments. I love Zelda Dutch. All the keys, well, the are, keys ornaments. are ornaments. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And great. there's just like a really bad tree painted on the door. You know, I like how there was no Christmas in this at all, but we just <laughs> put it in there. We were just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be even more wild when it's like not December when we release this. <laughs> like, wow, they're really hooked on that Christmas thing, huh? They're really going for that Christmas theme. Could have used this a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For the uh if we wanted to, I was I've been thinking about this because we've all been at a relative's house when it's Christmas and it's real cold outside, so they think they need to crank it up to like ninety inside. So that's the heat. And then you have the cold of <laughs> outside you got the acid which could be like i don't know figgy pudding or something i haven't figgy eaten figgy pudding. pudding i don't know what it tastes like <laughs> <laughs> so you just have a yeah, gross food yeah, or you could have a room full of puddings and that be what's everywhere no, the yeah. acid is the Ooh. is the heartburn that you get from eating all of the pudding in the acid room <laughs> kind of like the grinch <laughs> Oh man! Oh, oh man! My God! <laughs> uh, what was the fourth one? We had three. We had three. What I don't think we ever one? talked about the fourth one. I think we just talked about acid, cold, and fire. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it could be lightning. You know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have the you have Christmas lights everywhere. It's blinding. Oh, it's Christmas lights, yes, and they're all like short circuiting. <laughs> 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 oh man, that's great. Oh, that's perfect. That's awesome. It could also the acid one could also be poison if you really wanted to. Figgy rotten figgy pudding. Nobody poisons <laughs> during Christmas. It's only during Halloween. <laughs> Check true. your candy or whatever. Poison Even is also like the worst twice. damage type ever. <laughs> Like half, 90% of anything in D&D is immune to it. There's yeah. It's a- cool. It's just, you know, every nothing takes it. <laughs> a necrotic room that's just black licorice. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Or it's, um... I just thought my computer froze and I was like, no! (laughs) Or it could be, and I uh, I literally said that in my head, just went bum, 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 just like window shut down. (laughs) Oh man. I was was like, I could have swore there was something semi necrotic related to Christmas. Maybe not. It's a pretty cheery holiday.
There is, I have found, um, in Shadowfell, there is, like, a, you roll to see if there's, like, a hopelessness Mm -hmm. that you can get, and that makes it harder to do things, so you can just have that be in there. It's coal! (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And that's what powers the fire room! (laughs) Something like that. It's just sadness. You just go in. It's just sad. (laughs) It's the mind flare sadness. It could be psychic damage too. Of just (laughs) hit. Did you just keep getting hear the voices of like people on the naughty list? (laughs) And if you're a DM, you just grab your random like list, your random NPC name list, and you just start reading people's names off. (laughs) So then, like, (laughs) they have to make wisdom saves. Yeah. And they're and like, like, no. You'll have that one. You'll have that one player who takes notes, and they're like, "I wrote down John Smith. He's got to be important." And he's like, "Nah, he was just on the naughty list." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that works. And then if you touch any of the walls, you just cry. You just take necrotic damage. I don't know. You just die. <laughs> you could have your like parties. Sometimes like, DMing is hard. You just die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, I don't know how much damage you take. You just dead. Okay, just deal with it. Yeah. Right. I, I told you not to touch it. I literally said, "Don't touch this wall," <laughs> and you did. <laughs> <laughs> I know that would be one of my players, though. They touch every wall. They just be like, "Well, maybe this one's different," and it's like they're, they're all gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do have a, care, a player who would be like, "All right, guys, we didn't touch the first wall. We're good. This one we can touch. I know we can touch it." Yeah, and I'm like, "You have a strong sense that touching this wall would be a very bad idea." I'm gonna exactly touch it. <laughs> it won't do much. Exactly. Okay, so like, does this, uh, is there like any treasure they get at the end of this? Like, does this, does Eggnog have like, like, a hoard? Like, I don't think he would, but I mean. I mean. I want to say like a bunch of Christmas gifts. It's like like, actual, oh, what if he, what if he like, (laughs) they're all wrapped and addressed to each player. (laughs) Yes. Yes. They feel bad if they kill him. They're like, oh no. <laughs> and they open it up, and it's, it's just, just more mind <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to keep this going a little bit longer, after you could have like cool weapons, you know, find out what your players are looking for, and have like the tadpole like inside that weapon. So, like, say if like there's like a prick or something in like a sword hilt, and if they ever fail, like a just have them randomly do a random dexterity check, and if they fail, like they grab onto That'd it and they so get infused. Awesome. Like, you, the fighter gets, like, a plus two longsword, and then, like, they're like, oh, I actually wanted this. And then, like, games later, they're like, there's a tadpole in this! <laughs> they have to go back and check all of them. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, you find out, like, one of the players, like, activated there, so now you're like, oh, God, did mm-hmm. he get, did he get, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, it was Santa. <laughs> Santa gives everyone what they want. <laughs> you could That's also great. have whatever generates this levitate field be like a magic item that Eggnog has. Yeah. So that could just be something they have. Although that would probably destroy the rest of your campaign. <laughs> Yeah, well, it could be limited. It could be like a bracelet and you put it on and it casts levitate on you once per day. So it's just like, it's a memento, but it's not that powerful. <laughs> it could take like a certain amount of brain energy. So like elder brain could do this all day. It needs nog. You can only do it for like five yeah, minutes. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Yeah. It's powered by eggnog. <laughs> if you pour <laughs> eggnog on it, it gets stronger. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's powered by your brain on eggnog. No, you have to constantly drink. Maybe that's how they save the town, too. Like, if everybody bathes in eggnog, the tadpole will leave their heads. <laughs> <laughs> then they find that out. And they have to get, co- like, gallons and gallons of eggnog. And everybody's sick of eggnog by the by the time the campaign's over. <laughs> if it was an adventuring group that took care of these, maybe this town already produces eggnog. Like, that's what they're famous for. And they just tapped, like, a well and dr- drowned the elder brain with it. That's perfect. They're like, this will kill them. <laughs> 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 Little did they know. Yeah, so the players show up at this town, and everybody here is like really weird and friendly, and they're just like, "Oh, we're the eggnog town. Do you want to <laughs> have a gift?" And then they open them up, and there's just like these tadpole eggs, and the players are like, "Whoa, where did you get these?" And they're like, "Oh, they were sent over by the eggnog." And they're like, "Oh, where's that at?" And he's like, "Oh, we'll lead you over." Town. And they lead you over to like the little hut, the house, and they're, they're like, "Was this always a, 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 in an elf tinkering place?" And they're like, "No, it got rid of." for the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> so they go in and there's like a num- a dance number and then they then they investigate and find everything. I love the idea of like writing up a whole kobold like 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 
<laughs> I think I went to like a theater and sit down and they come out on stage and they do like a bunch of Christmas songs. It reminds me of like the, the Shrek, the Shrek thing when they first enter the town. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly it. And then they, um, and then, uh, it's a fun, it'll be a fun, ex- uh, uh, adventure for the DM to find out how much kobold musical the players will sit through before they get tired. <laughs> Like, it's been an hour already, and they're like, oh my god, how long is this? Is there an intermission? And then they eventually start investigating. They're like, I have to go to the, the bathroom. Like, yeah. Can I get up and go? <laughs> That's that's the first test of your Christmas yeah, cheer. Yeah, I, I think it can be a mystery too. Like your players can try to figure it out, and eventually, all players get antsy. They, eventually, they'll want to find out what's going on here. So if you just give them hours and hours of Cobalt musical, they'll eventually <laughs> go to the bathroom and try to figure out what's going on, and then find <laughs> find a factory and be like, "Oh, this is the way to go. We should go this way." Maybe they even like put the eggs in their snacks and stuff. They're like, "Oh, welcome to our refreshment bar. Would you like a drink or?" Some popcorn or or uh, this egg, which contains Gordonfish <laughs> Ganesh. Like, oh, I don't want that. No, <laughs> no thanks. Oh, I think I think you hit you go on a factory tour. You know, they're like the villagers, like, oh yeah, come to the factory tour. It's great. All we the, love it all here. The sound like that. They all talk like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to the, the factory. I crinkle toes. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, I take you on tour now. Here's a complimentary fruit basket. They're wearing elf masks, but the <laughs> mouths don't move. <laughs> <laughs> The players are like, what is this? <laughs> one one takes off his mask. Yeah, it's the uniform for the holidays. And he puts it back down. <laughs> If they get any cobalt, if they if they if they calm emotions, if they dispel magic, any cobalt, they're just like, oh my god, help us, <laughs> please! Yeah, yeah the, the accent drops, and you're like, please get me out of here. We've been rehearsing for days. <laughs> my feet hurt. We only eat eggs. Just have it be like Disneyland people, and they're just like, I'm gonna take my ten minute break now. I got I gotta go. And they're like, Leave. it's not even like they warned you of anything. They're just like, oh yeah. thank God, I can take my break. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. There's a brain in there sending eggnog. You should go deal with that. <laughs> yeah, can you, it's just you see that uh, you see that door back there that says "Do not enter, employees only." Right yeah. through that door. Just right through that door, please. It just says it says cast members only. Yeah, it says ca- elves only. <laughs> <laughs> It said kobolds, but they scratched it out and wrote elves above it. So it yeah. says elves only. And they're like, you can see it scratched out. It says, you say kobolds. They're like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, someone rolls. Can I investigate? You're like, yeah, you see a door. Uh, it, it says elves only. And you're like, what? Oh, if you look more closely, you see like uh, there's a huge X across kobold. But, as you know, they're not very good at it. So it's, it's like elves old. <laughs> yep. Oh, man, that's great. Oh, that's perfect. Man, this is great. <laughs> so that's a mess. But I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's our but, show, but Jacob. Can, just for the record, <laughs> you could use it. Again. This mess is our show. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally run that though. That's the kind of weird stuff I would throw at my players because, like, ever what I love doing with my players is just kind of being like, "This is what you think it is." Like, I, I like to do the tropes, and then I just like to kind of spin and give them something else. So, like, um, you know, they'll go to a place, and then it's just like one eighty. Like, it's something else. It's not what you expected. And they're like, "What? It's going on here? There's eggnog and." Now Elves. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Also, it's called Flavor Town because because Guy Fieri, you know, <laughs> Guy Fieri, Guy Fieri, eggnog Santa or Krampus has been one of the weirdest creations we've made on the show. Players are going to be like, J- Jacob, what? Did, what is this? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> drank, drank too much eggnog one night. I came up with this idea. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's great. I think we're ready to move into the next segment, which is <gasps> our recap and synopsis. Um, Jacob, you're more than welcome to take over either one of these once I describe what they are. Okay. Um, recap, we just kind of go over the gist of what we've come up um, with over this discussion. Uh, synopsis is we'll zoom in and you'll kind of describe a scene as you would to your players if they were encountering it for the first time. Um, we do the synopsis second, just so that you have a little more time to come up with it. Uh, would you like to do either of these? Yeah, I can do, I can do both. <laughs> Ooh, okay. all right. 
Okay, so obviously, I've said it a couple times because I'm, I'm, I'm going through the bunch of my head to see if there's anything else that needs to be added. Clearly not. <laughs> so what we came up with is a town that is very festive. Um, and everybody here is mind controlled by eggnog. Um, and, and eggs with, uh, with nogs in them, like brain tadpoles. So a little play on words there. Players enter this town and, uh, they, they will be, to- they will be very confused about what's going on here. Everybody acts very strange. Um, and they'll be led to the world workshop outside of town where uh, there are kobolds who are acting as elves who are who will probably give a dance number that the players will go through and find very strange and if they do any kind of investigating like on a door that says uh, kobolds only but it actually says elves only because it's crossed out uh, they will find this very strange factory where um, ropes and conveyor belts are running along the walls and in the center um, and as soon as they step into this area they find themselves floating so they'll they'll uh, as if the levitate spells cast it on them so they They'll make their way down these conveyor belts and each conveyor belt will lead to a different room uh, of their choosing. They can kind of, there's like, it's like crossway uh, um, conveyor belts kind of going into different rooms with different doors. Um, And each of these four, there's five doors, a big one and then two small ones. And each of these doors um, uh, leads to a different type of flavor town. (laughs) 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 One of them is flame. Um, One of them is, is acid. Another one is cold and another one is necrotic. And um, each, each one of them, uh, all the walls uh, are are covered in this type of element. Um, and if the players touch them, they'll take a certain amount of damage. But as they go in, they find out that all of these eggs are being created here. And there's fire ones, there's cold ones, there's necrotic ones, there's acid ones. So they got to destroy all of them and then gather all the keys to go into the center room. Um, also, important note, while this is happening, the kobolds are going to come back and start thunder waving everybody. Um, so there you go. Oh, a little uh, foreshadowing you could do is while they're watching the, the kobold uh, musical, uh, they could be using thunder wave to like make sounds or like blast each other around or, or things like that so the players will know that they have that and they can prepare for it and they're tap dancing yeah <laughs> yeah once they gather all the keys they go through the main door and after they go through that main door they will be led to the big boss room with a giant brain an elder brain and a vat of eggnog who has two uh, arcane <laughs> hands that it will use to toss eggs and gifts at the players um, and really they can probably just appease this this egg Nog if they just tell him, oh, hey, you just want to celebrate Christmas? Well, that's okay. You just can't be so violent about it. And he'll be like, okay. <laughs> and everybody lived happily ever after. They'll get some gifts addressed to them, um, which all, unfortunately, have tadpoles in them. <laughs> so that's, that's a synopsis of what we just created. <laughs> Yeah. And then, oh, so like, uh, and then the second one was a, a scene, a, a, a what? A synopsis is what a we call synopsis. it. synopsis. Yeah. So if you're, when you're, if you're DMing it, pick one scene you'd like to describe to our listeners or slash your players. Okay. So like if it's the end boss battle or if it's like yeah. just as you enter into the, the factory. Easy. All right. So. You take all the keys you've gathered, gathered and you put them into the door and they all begin to unlock and the door slowly opens. And as you step in, you just see darkness before you. But this room is massive. Your footsteps echo beyond the distant walls and you something catches your breath as you sniff in cloves and milk. Suddenly, the room lights up, and in the center of this large warehouse-looking room um, is a vat of yellow liquid, and coming out of, from behind of it are these two gigantic blue and purple hands uh, that reach down to a pile of gifts covered in the corners, and each one of them, as, as, as the hand picks them up and pops off the top of them, a little egg rolls out, and it hatches, and you see a little tadpole squiggling on the ground, like the ones you've seen before in the previous rooms, um, all of them covered in frosting and sprinkles, sprinkles of frost, sprinkles of figgy pudding, (laughs) sprinkles of depression, (laughs) chili flakes. Um, and, and it looks down and you notice a very strange thing at the bottom of this, of this giant, uh, vat of yellow, what you could assume to be eggnog gallons and gallons. Um, there's a spigot at the bottom, but you swear you see it moving and and shifting as if something is sitting inside of it. And as you look closer, uh, uh, you hear a, a, a slight and at the front of the glass uh, uh, jar, you see a brain has hit the front of it. And at this point, everybody goes, oh, girl, oh, what the hell? Oh. <laughs> and, then, and then that's when you roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, this is going to be, f- God, I can't wait for this one to come out. <laughs> this, is, this is excellent. So weird. <laughs> that's, that's, it's what we do. We 
we've tr- I remember there was a point where we were just like, do we ever make a normal show? Like, is it ever just <laughs> classic D and D? Nah. Nah. How about eggnog brain? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's fun. Well, that was great. Um, thanks for coming on our show. Uh, Jacob, if you want to remind everybody where totally. they can find you. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, XP to Level 3. You can find me on Twitter, at XP to Level 3. Um, and you can, if you want to watch me live stream some d and and play other stuff, um, you can check me out on Arcane Arcade um, on YouTube as well, and on Twitch. So uh, that's where I'll do all my stuff. Oh, I also have a Patreon where I upload stuff like this, where it's just like, I, 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 I packs of homebrew things and so if you want any of my weird writing you can go there as well but uh this was amazing guys this is so much fun holy crap this is ridiculous i gotta run this for my players sometimes i bet they're just they're gonna be so confused and i'm just gonna link them to this and just be like we made it (laughs) tell your friends tell people yeah if you're watching this go tell your friends about this and be like look you can, this is a tool. <laughs> it's a surprise tool. It'll help us later. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm uh, I'm Sam. I rolled for your scenarios today. Uh, you can find me at uh, DM Mambo Five or for the podcast I run uh, at uh, Bip D and D for Bardic Inspiration Podcast. I'm David. I I was here for this. Um, <laughs> you can find me at Daedra18 on Twitter that is D-A-E-D-R-A-1-8 and I'm Malcolm and I basically have I basically have the same sign off I, I was here for this I'm, a, I'm one of the hosts for this I thank you all for listening and uh, hope you all had a very merry December, February, January whenever this comes out Good night. <laughs> oh wait, Malcolm, just the show. Do the show's Twitter. The the show's the show's Twitter. <laughs> oh yes. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, that's we're at FitGDnd um, on Twitter, and please send us themes and scenarios and fun questions to throw at us in the beginning because we like to have different talking points and we think it's fun to have something before we dive directly into the action. Totally. So uh, yeah. Obtuse audio.